I was just watching a video of the, there's these three kids in front of an observation hive and they were intimidating me, going, hello ladies! And they were cracking up laughing so much. Anyway, that was awesome. So anybody out there that's got some of that sort of stuff to send in, that was bloody good fun. <laughs> and good for you. And I'm trying to control my language so as the kids can enjoy watching me. Tell you what, we even got, we're starting to get hit up to be put into school, so that's gonna be a bit weird. We're gonna have all this beep, beep, beep everywhere. So anyway, we might have to reshoot the entire series. Anyway, don't worry about that. We've just been driving back from Renmark with our box full of bees. And I'm just trying to work out what to do because I've got a fair few hives at the farm where they're ready for the blossom. So I'm thinking we might just take them down to Buzz Hill because I haven't got any, well, I've got enough area there that haven't got any hives next to them, just in case they've got some foul brood or something horrible in there, which hopefully they haven't. So I've been rummaging through the shit heap. What did that, what did that dear old man call it? He's got a, the graveyard. I've been wondering, what, he's actually even lived out a decent name for it. I've just got junk. So anyway, we've been rummaging through stuff and I found this, this is a base of an old shuttle. And I'm not a hundred percent sure what the hell I was doing with that. But anyway, waste not, want not here at the recycle camp. So I'm gonna use this as the artificial roof for our box. I've got some old tin that we're gonna screw to the artificial framework or artificial roof floor I don't know would it have to be a roof now won't it because it was a floor now it's going to be a roof would that mean it's upside down a bit like me I'm upside down this is a little bit of rough this might be a bit of rough insulation I'm just having an alternative plan in case putting them in taking them out of the box they're in doesn't actually work out in the short term we've take a we'll take a hive with us but we'll just this is this is the alternative to if that goes to shit We should put a rope on that. Jolly gosh, now I've got to find a bit of string to throw over it. But just as a footnote, viewers, I've asked the young cameraman to put the trailer on the back of the ute. And I'm just noticing here, whilst I was considering the fact as to whether I should tie my load down, I just thought, well, perhaps I reckon he might have forgotten something rather important. If you're not sure, this is the little plug that makes the trailer work. So the light, well, the light's on the trailer work. So I figure if that one plugged in and we had our load tied on, we'd still be in the ship. At least you got the chains hooked up, that's something. Safety first, boys and girls. I was just thinking tying this down. It's really cool all you Patreon supporters because um, we're having a little bit of a struggle with the fuel bill and the getting up and down the road because the lad's got to drive a fair way to get here. And um, so it's, yeah, it's bloody awesome. Cheer over to you, so you never know, we might actually be able to put a bit more of the shit together to have a laugh together. We're just going to get this box out of the boot of the car, which is sort of mid-morning now here. And we're just going to have a bit of an interpretation as to whether we get organised and take them out of the box and put them in another bee box, a bee box, a real bee box, or whether we leave them in their own box. So I will be letting you be the judge of what's a good idea. So remember to shout loudly so we know what we're doing. Oh, oh, oh. Holy shit, can you hear that? <laughs> That might be just a little ambitious. Shh, don't tell them we're here. Oh, my poor old tailgate. <laughs> the other day, I bloody had it down and I was reversing around down over it. Well, yeah, here somewhere, I can't remember exactly, but I was reversing and I bloody backed into with a tree and of course I bent the jolly hinge. So now, uh, now it doesn't quite shut perfect anymore. I've got a lot better than it was because I had to really slam it, but now I only have to a little bit slam it, so. Oh, I don't know. So I'm, all, I'm a panel beater as well. I don't know where that's. A, anyway, I'm a, I'm a bloody wrecker actually. This is not a bad progression, you see. Now, when you're a bee wrangler, after a little while, you get a few different ideas going on. I remember the first few times we caught a wild swarm, we would have had such an excitement going on. Now, what have we done? We've wrapped them up in a bit of old crappy bed sheet, and they're all contained. So we'll put them over here, and then we'll have some excitement. But at least they're all here. They're not all bloody running amok. So, <laughs> I reckon we're getting good at this shit. But let's not get too excited because we haven't pulled them apart yet. Right. Oh, dear. Put it there, I reckon. Put Always. it aside. Uh, I reckon that way, I reckon. Okay. 
That's nah, mistake. I got you. You have to go the other way. Sorry. Jeez. Hey, hey. Push me, man. God, just so I could bring, bring you along, otherwise I'd have terrible trouble. Hey. Have a listen to them. They're not happy. Like, we've got them contained. Look, I can't even. We could have done that without our suits on so far. So, I don't think they're going to be very impressed. But so far, so good. You feel the warmth. You know what I'm worried about if we have them leave them in here. If we leave them in this box, being that it's not really sealed and now it's going to be out in the open, I think they're going to be in trouble. <laughs> Last time I was using my pocket knife, I was a bit mean. I don't know exactly sure what I was wrecking, but she's a bit blunt. So I've got my old chainsaw file. It's almost a still. That's what you use to sharpen your knife when you're chefing is a still. And a, this is a bit, this is a very rough still. This is what I use to sharpen the chainsaw blade. Oh, yeah, oh ladies and gentlemen. So I wonder if we've got any gentlemen in there. Normally they don't breed many drones this time of year. Because they, they might keep a couple around because um, obviously they're not doing any breeding. That's the next excitement that happens. If they don't breed drones, they won't be able to mate with the virgin queens that are going to swarm shortly. So it's an interesting little exercise. So some, some swarms get organized and breed lots of drones and others don't breed very many drones. But if you don't have boys, you don't have babies apparently. This is a bit like the TV show, The Great Reveal. You know, when they, when they do the bloody kitchen reno or something and they pop the curtain back or they bring the poor unfortunate couple back in from their holiday and they say look look we've renovated your kitchen and we've painted it purple and put blue tiles on the wall and the wife goes oh isn't that bloody marvellous what the fuck are you doing well here they are hello hello girls I don't know, I don't suppose they can really stay in this box really, can they? Because if we want to relocate them a little bit, they're not, not going to be able to be moved like this. <sighs> I don't know. It's just not really the ideal time of year, but I did bring a bit of sugar water and a little bit of pollen substitute, so that would be a bit of an experiment in itself, wouldn't it? Although I don't think I brought a feeder for it, so that would be fun. Yeah, well, I reckon we'll, we'll pull it pull it open and we'll just have a look what's going on in here. I mean, it's not a terribly unpleasant day, so hopefully, I was just having a thought, if we actually get around to making our observation hive, we might use these ladies in it. We could call them the observation, um, what do they call these? Bloody sweat box. We could call these the sweat box bees. <laughs> Poor little buggers, look at them. Ah, oh, dear. Anyway, they don't know how lucky they are to be rescued by a bush bee man. Sorry girls, they just didn't want you in the shed any longer. I think they wanted to get rid of these boxes out of the way. <laughs> so they're all hanging off the roof, which is good. So now how do you reckon? How do you reckon we're going to do that? I wonder if we put it on the ground. Ah, oh, shit, I don't know, lad. Because they're all hanging there, so... Oh. It's just a matter of figuring out which bits we want to keep. We want to keep some of the honey for them so they got some stores. Definitely. But I reckon as long as we get enough moved, even if we leave some of it, like leave it here for them to get cleaned up. But exactly where to from here. I wonder if we tip it right over. Would that be better? Like put this out of the way and then tip the whole thing on its back. protect them a little bit from the sun. Well ladies I'm just wondering where to start. We've got a lot of stuff going on in here. I reckon we'll start over this corner here where it's nice and small. So I'm gonna just get most of this stuff out of here for a start. These little ladies are gonna just shake on the sheet over there because you don't really want them to be in the dirt because if they get in the dirt it doesn't do their bloody little bodies any good and then they can well usually they know 
Usually they don't live too flash if they've been rolling in the dirt. Well, this is why you obviously when you get a new hive from a feral colony, you don't know what the hell you're getting. So that's why we're down here in the middle of nowhere to pull it apart and see what we find. And hopefully they look pretty healthy, so we'll find out in a minute when we dig around in there. There's a bit of a senior mature hive beetle running around in here. That's not a good thing. Go, oh, tough little fuckers. Goodness me. I thought we'd just start this side because this is just old honeycomb that I've obviously used up in the winter. The brood's about there somewhere, which is what we really want to catch. There's a little bit of honey over here, which is cool. So we're just going to dig away at this a little bit until we get to somewhere where there's either brood or honey. And then we'll stick it on some frames and pop it in the box. And hopefully they can get relocated. In. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> so it's, they're starting to send a bit of a distress signal. They're going, what's going on? Not only are we upside down, some prick's still in our home. I was just thinking, I wonder if, you know, I was reading this book by Dr. The, the, the Langsworth dude, Dr. Langsworth, I don't know if he was Dr. Langsworth, but Father Langsworth or whatever he was. And I wonder if this is how he decided to get his removable frames. Because apparently the first box he made with removable frames was basically an old champagne box. So, and that's probably why the frames and the stuff all ended up the right size for a champagne box. And here we are still going on with it. But this is kind of like, maybe he's clever enough when he put that apart and he thought, shit, perhaps I could make that so as I could pull them in and out. Because look how clever they are. Look how uniformed. Pretty amazing. So we're starting to get close to home. Close to somewhere where the nest might be. I'm just going to pop the whole thing in there, I reckon. For a minute. Just let them think about staying there. <laughs> Obviously we're upside down at the minute so they've got nothing much happening down here but they've got a little bit of honey at the top. So this would have been where their brood was well, going to be next spring coming up. Heck you can hear the buzz they're getting a bit excited. That's a bit of food for them. Which will be better than the sugar that I brought for them. Oh, yum yum yum. Oh well, all they need now is some bloody toast. That'll be all good. <laughs> There's a bit more honey there that they can have. We'll stack all this in here. So then they can, they'll figure it out later on, clean it all up, make it all nice. At least that will give them some food. Just see if the lady at the moment doesn't bloody try to make a run for it. That'll be really crap. Otherwise we'll be... My goodness lad, this has turned out to be a lot bigger hive than I'd expected so I'm thinking being that the weather's sort of just going to get turned nasty here again and we're running out of time and I'm not going to have time to actually get this done before we get too cold so I'm reckoning what we're going to have, if we just have a little bit of a look at the brood since we've got it upside down and we've stirred the poor little buggers up we'll have a little bit of a look to make sure they're not diseased and then I reckon we might just tip it back up sit it back up here and we'll come back in a, I don't know, two or three weeks time when it's a bit warmer because it's still a bit early in the season for doing this sort of thing and they seem like such a cool little box of bees. I don't want to kill them just for the sake of them and doing it today. So if that's all right with you viewers, we're just going to have a look at the brood and then we're going to put it back together and we're just going to seal it up a bit so they've not um, been attacked by the weather. That's why we bought that crazy roof that, we, <laughs> that you saw earlier. And um, yeah, I reckon that might be the best course of action for this particular project. You can see the broods going on down here. Look at that, that looks bloody beautiful. I don't want to kill her because this is probably going to be a nice queen I reckon. See how she's got a nice circle going in here? She's mixed it up a bit, she's left the panel in there and she's got a really good lot at the front. I can't see any bad black smelly shit so, or any chalkboard. I mean you won't really know until we completely pull it apart. But like I said it's, oh look at that. She's too nice to she's too nice to risk, given the weather at the minute. We'll just stack her back together, and I reckon, being that this weather's bloody not being kind, and she looks like she's bloody beautiful, 
we don't want to lose her, so I reckon we're just going to do that. And we'll figure it out another day. <laughs> I reckon we're just going to tip the wax on the sheet. But I might actually use the wax to mend the box. How crazy would that be for a thought? I don't know. That could work, couldn't it? <laughs> Not too bad. We'll leave that bit of vent over there. We might block this corner up. So is it the bloody wretched moths can't get in here too easy. Oh, we'll just poke a little bit in here just to sort of give them a bit of a fighting chance. Hopefully they I don't know whether that will work or not, but I'm thinking I just don't really like this huge hole here with giving a bit of a draft. The rest of it's not bad. And I'm sort of wondering whether to fix it up with their own with their own honeycomb like that. Would that be too bizarre? Look at that. Might have come up with a whole new system. A little bit of let's mend my box with my boxes. Let's mend my let's mend it with their own resource. Oh, mind you, they might tell me to get fucked too. <laughs> Mind you, this isn't, this isn't going to be their long-term home. This is just until the weather warms up a bit. Well, we'll cart it over there. This is my artificial roof. I don't think the girls will be too stressed out, but I don't want them. All we need to do, if we haven't had a bloody rain in like six months, but it'll be my luck, we'll get a bloom two inches of rain and drown them, and after all this effort, that would suck. Because <laughs> I actually want to keep these lot. Girls, what's going on? That's not very stable. <laughs> They're not very impressed with this idea. As I've said before, they hate being banged. We get a bloody big rain. I mean, they'll, I've had them in a tree. We'll go and have a look at it. When I've got in an old tree stump that I cut off the top of that. Well, you probably saw that on Facebook, that bloody thing. We might go and have a look at that. They got, they got no real roof. I don't know whether this is stupid or not. It's a day of decisions today. <laughs> the cool thing is about this is, well, or the bad thing about this is you all get to see us make these decisions. And we're not really sure whether they're right or wrong ourselves until we find out later on. I brought some corrugated iron as you saw earlier as well and I'm just thinking whether, I don't know whether that would get enough lift and she'd take off like a sailboat. So we might just leave it at that I reckon. <laughs>